you know, when you walk in the entrance, the first thing people seem to notice are these incredible stone walls. So what, what kind of stone is this? On uh, the building here, we have two types of uh, travertine stone. Uh, we have the Etrusca, which is the outside stone, and we have classic Navona, which is the inside stone. It's all been basically saw cut, filled in, honed down to a certain base of stone. And I think we ended up with about a 40% reflectivity is the actual answer that we received after, you know, eight or so different panels that we reviewed or mock-ups. Well, so many times in a museum, the walls are sheetrock, so they can punch holes in it, hang works right. on it, put in electrical outlets if they're needed, and you can't do this. So how does the Nasher get around those problems? Lorenzo Piano did with his design. He put in an art bar where we actually hang everything on these Ayakawa hangers. And you can see it up there if you can look. It's the basically the bar that connects to what they call the pistolas. These all hang about 350 pounds of weight on them, each one. If these blocks are only about an inch thick, they're obviously not stacked up independently. How are the, how are the blocks assembled to create the wall? If we were to peel this wall off, we'd have a structural steel assembly that goes from the floor all the way up past the roof system. And then it's shimmed against the steel so you get this perfect 16th of an inch alignment with the stone. It's amazing when you see the walls and they provide such a beautiful backdrop for the museum. Well, the stone outside looks really different than the interior stone. So why don't we walk outside and compare it to the stone out there? You bet. You can tell the stone is rather different. It's got a lot more texture. So what are they trying to accomplish here, Neil? They were looking for uh, the dated look, but not rough enough where it's just a slab placed. It gives the illusion of stacked blocks, which is the way they used to build back in the Roman days. And it's gone through a different type of cutting operation than the other material that we talked about inside. This was cut, uh, think of it like a wedding cake. This is cut what they call parallel with the riff, which is the layers of the stone. So they've cut this piece of stone and it goes through a very intense water blasting operation, which gives all these little speck. And what basically it erodes, like down in here, it erodes the tidal pools that have been set in, in its, you know, the life of the stone. So if we look here, you can see this piece here is a match to this piece here. And the same thing on the other side. You have all these different pieces. They all get the quirk miter, which is a 45 glued up joints on the corner. So it's kind of, it gives the illusion of a, 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 a giant piece of stone, which we could not do just due to the fact that behind, if we were to pull this off, you have structural steel in here. You have the channels that we talked about for anchorage needs. We have downspouts for water. We have electrical lines and a series of other things that are all hidden inside this wall. The Romans never had those things, so it was real easy for them to stack blocks. Here we had to do something a little bit different. The, the finish of this makes such an excellent contrast. Another thing that makes the terrace so unique is the way that the ceiling extends 14 feet out into the space outside, which gives the viewer an easier transition as you're walking from the Texas sunshine into the air-conditioned building.